السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته to carry on with the special embryology lectures and the development of the foregut I'm gonna discuss in this presentation the development of the stomach and the spleen I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, professor and head of anatomy department at Mansour University, Egypt To start with the development of the stomach It begins its development as a dilatation that appears in the foregut during the fourth week of development. Its dorsal part grows faster than its ventral part. And then it rotates around two axes, its longitudinal axis. It rotates in a clockwise direction and also in its antro posterior axis so how it rotates along its uh, longitudinal axis imagine that we have a transverse section in the embryo and you can see the neural tube here at the back this is the posterior abdominal wall and this is the anterior abdominal wall here in the middle we have the stomach it is suspended to the posterior abdominal wall by the posterior mesogastrium and to the anterior abdominal wall by the anterior mesogastrium. This is its right uh, side and this is its left side. So it begins to rotate along its longitudinal axis in a clockwise direction like this. So this will result into the following uh, that the left surface will now face ventrally and its right surface will now face dorsally. Again, in this longitudinal section, this is the foregut. Here in the middle, we have the stomach. The foregut is suspended to the anterior abdominal wall by the ventral mesentery and to the posterior abdominal wall by the dorsal mesentery. You are looking now at the stomach from its left surface, and this is the left vagus nerve. Remember that its dorsal uh, part grows faster than its ventral part and then it rotates along its longitudinal axis in a clockwise direction. So at the end its left surface will face ventrally and its dorsal curvature extends now to the left side forming the greater curvature of the stump. Also its dorsal mesentery is carried to the left forming the greater omentum and behind it lies the lesser sac. Also, the left vagus nerve will now form the anterior vagal trunk that innervates the ventral surface of the stomach, while the right vagus nerve will form the posterior vagal trunk that will innervate its dorsal surface. In the same time, the stomach will rotate around its anteroposterior axis also in a clockwise direction so its cardiac end will move downward and to the left while its pyloric end will move upward and to the right now the stomach assumes its final position with its long axis extending in this direction from above to the left down to the right and below let's now talk about the anomalies of the stomach we have either congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis it is of unknown cause uh, and there is hypertrophy of the muscle wall of the uh, pylorus uh, leading to marked dilatation of the stomach above this obstruction and the collapse of the rest of the gastrointestinal tract as we can see in this uh, x-ray here you can notice marked dilatation of uh, the stomach also, we can have uh, an, another anomaly called the hiatus hernia. Uh, this results from short esophagus. So part of the stomach slides into the thoracic cage. We may have what is called hourglass stomach. Here we can see a construction in the middle of the stomach and divides it into two parts, upper part and lower part, exactly like the sand uh, hour here. There are anomalies resulting from failure of recanalization of uh, the stomach, as in gastric atresia, which takes different degrees.
let's now talk about the development of the spleen. To understand the development of the spleen, let's have a look at this cross section in the embryo. You can see the dorsal abdominal wall. This is the dorsal aorta, and these are the two developing kidneys. Here you can see uh, the stomach in the middle. This is the dorsal mesogastrium, and this is the ventral mesogastrium connecting the stomach to the anterior abdominal wall. In the dorsal mesogastrium, spleen develops from mesenchymal cells that lies within these two layers of the dorsal mesogastrium. With the rotation of the stomach, the lesser sac develops and lies behind the stomach, and the dorsal mesogastrium containing the spleen will now lie on the left side. With further development, the spleen now is an intraperitoneal structure, completely surrounded by peritoneum and connected to the posterior abdominal wall by what is called lienorenal ligament that connects the spleen to the surface of the kidney. And also another uh, ligament called the gastrosplenic ligament, which connects the spleen to the stomach. And this is the end of my presentation about the development of the stomach and the spleen. If you like it, please leave a comment and do not forget to subscribe, like and share.